Hi, I'm Becca from Miller's Crossing Vintage Design, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do a faux barnwood finish on walls. These were a pine, these were pine paneling, and again, you can use this finish on furniture, you can use it on anything you want to create a faux finish, um, and it looks really great. Uh, so this is the back area here that you can see, and that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, so this couple was looking for an industrial kind of rustic look for their basement to bring it current. Um, so the very first thing that I did is I used an everyday cleaner to scrub the walls really, really well. They weren't very dirty, so it, it really didn't take much. Um, but you wanna make sure if they are dirty that you're just cleaning them and cleaning them until there's no more residue that on your rack. I used this type of roller and I used bare paint, um, paint and primer in one. And you want it to be a flat finish. And um, let's see, I went with paint and primer in one. And I forget the, I forget which kind it was. But anyways, I'll put all of the materials in the comments so you can easily access them. And I also will have a blog post on this as well. But you wanna use just, you know, your regular roller. And as you can see here, I don't have the finish on here yet. This is, I rolled it all out. And, and what I loved about this paint is it actually did cover in one coat, which is great. Um, and once, once it's um, on there, I let it dry for the entire day, and by then I was exhausted anyways. And then I came back and did the faux finish. And I'm gonna show you today how to do that. Um, the materials that you want are, you want to pick a palette of grays, the darkest one being on the bottom, and then you want to go with varying uh, color levels of that. Usually when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you'll see a little uh, color card that shows three different shades. That's the best way to go about doing it, and I always throw in a white there too. Um, I used White Dub, which is my favorite Benjamin Moore color, um, white. And let's see, so I like to have big mixing areas like this because things get kind of messy. I put all three colors in there, all three grays are in there, the darkest, the next one, and then the lightest. And then I have an extra one over here that's with the white in case I feel like I need to add some white. Um, so anyways, yeah, so we'll get started. Oh, and you wanna have chip brushes. These are my favorite. And you wanna have some handy rags um, and yeah, we're just gonna get going. So the very first thing I do is I take my, my chip brush and I like to have a paper plate handy and I'm gonna dip it into one of the colors. Uh, you know, it really doesn't matter which one. I usually like to, actually I take that back. I like to start with the lighter ones because obviously going with the wall color isn't gonna do anything. I like to use the wall color if I've gotten a little bit too much of the light colors on there. So I just wanna dab it a little bit in the paint. So there's just a little whisper on the ends of the chip brush. And then I like to wipe off any debris so it's very dry. So I'm gonna start at the top. And I'm just gonna go all the way down, not breaking the stroke at all. And then I'm gonna go back up. And then I'm gonna start over here and go back down. And now the brush is getting really dry and there's not much left on it. So I know that I'm ready to reapply. So now I think I will I think I'm gonna go with the same two light grays again. I've got it on there just a little bit. I'm gonna wipe, 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 and then I'm gonna go back up and then down again. And then you turn your brush and go back up. And the reason you don't wanna break the stroke is because then you're gonna see brush strokes and it's not gonna look authentic. I've learned that through trial and error and, and uh, just doing this for a while. Just a little bit, I'm gonna wipe, 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 and then I'm gonna go back up and then down again, and then you turn your brush and go back up. And 
the reason you don't want to break the stroke is because then you're going to see brush strokes and it's not going to look authentic. I've learned that through trial and error and, and uh, just doing this for a while. So um, over here it looks a little empty, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm going to start from the bottom and sometimes you want to kind of alternate. So sometimes you're going to start from the top and sometimes you're going to start from the bottom. And by doing that, you're going to create a variation um, because you don't want every board to be exactly the same because then it's just going to look like it was done and it's not going to look like barn wood because barn wood's not always the same. And I think I might add a little white in there for some depth. And see, I actually made my own mistake right there and I stopped my brush stroke. So now I have a brush stroke up there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of paint to that to try to blend it. And you can always, you know, use, use a rag. You don't wanna push too hard because you don't wanna pull off the wall paint. But you can kind of pull where you might've made some mistakes. You can even add a little bit of water to your brush to help with to help with blending I use I like to have a water bottle handy so some of those areas that caught I'm gonna put a little water on it and even take the brush onto the side a little bit and do this so then where the paint caught it just looks like it's part of the book part of the wood some, you know, some wood has more large white pieces on it than others from fading. And so I'm just gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with the mistake. Maybe pull a little bit off, a little bit over there. Okay, so now that board is done. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the next board. So I'm gonna blot my chip brush so it's not too wet. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the lighter two grays. Make sure to blot my brush so it's not too wet. And I'm gonna start from the bottom this time since the last time I started from the top. bottom again until the brush is completely dry from paint. I'm just going to keep dry brushing it on until there's nothing left on the brush. And I got a little bit too much there again. So as you can see, it's all kind of like trial and error. It's hard to know exactly how much you have on your brush. I mean, you can guess, but you just want to work with the mistake and um, work it into the, into the piece. I could even add a little bit of the main gray, which was the first gray I put on the wall to maybe break that up a little bit. And also, I started this project two weeks ago and then I took two weeks off to go on vacation. So I'm just jumping back in. When you do a room this size, you find that you kind of find a rhythm and a groove to it and you kind of just start you know, you kind of just get a rhythm to it and, you know, you kind of finish it that way. So um, I'm just starting, but by the time I get over here, I'm gonna have a good rhythm going and I'm gonna zip right through. Okay, so that's looking good. I'm going to go ahead and start on the other one. Blotting all of the colors. So it's nice and dry. And maybe I'll start in the middle this time. And again, you wanna start at different places each time because you don't want them to look the same. Because if they look the same, then it's gonna look not authentic. So this one I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going to add some light to this one.
Okay, I feel like there's a little bit too much white at the top there, so I'm gonna add a little bit more gray. So just like any artwork, it's, it's really all about getting the look that you want. There's trial and error, there's not an exact science to this. The brush is gonna do what it's gonna do, you're gonna get too much paint on one time, whatever. The goal is to work with what you have and keep playing with your chip brush until you get the look that you want. You know, you can go in, this, in the corners, you can go flat down, you can go up, but just make sure that you have long, even strokes. So, and even if you do get a few stroke marks in there, it's not gonna be, you know, horrible. So anyways, here you go. You can see again, here's the room. And this is how it started. So it's a really, you know, affordable way to update a very, very outdated room. Um, and the customers are very, very happy. And what's great about this paint also, you guys, is that it's washable and I don't have to do anything to the top of it. It can stay just like this once it dries. And, um, you know, out we go. We're done. So, um, you know, happy painting in the comments. You're welcome. Hi, and thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope that you learned something today. And if you have any questions, please leave a message in the um, comment section. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. I'd love for you to follow me. Thank you.